Hey, welcome back to the Alaska Sea Life Center, everyone. I'm Darren, this is Kenny, and today we're standing in front of our Denizens of the Deep exhibit. And uh, Kenny is going to narrate a feeding of this tank in just a moment. Um, we can introduce you to some of the species that we've got, so as you're watching, you know who you're seeing. Uh, we do have some pretty big mouths in here, so we've got the black spotted rockfish down here in the front with the huge eyes. Uh, right behind them, there is a halibut, and I'm hoping that the halibut is hungry today because then you'll get to see the, the body shape of that unique flatfish that's oh. uh, quintessential here. Oh, perfect. There we go. We're getting some Look movement. Like you're just yeah. hungry for a little Hello, camera halibut. attention. Yeah, yeah, good. Here goes our halibut, and you can see it's on its side, and we are looking at the right side of the halibut. That's the colored side on the underside uh, with no eyes. That fish is all white, and so we, are, we would call this the eyed side. It's a right-eyed fish that we're seeing. Uh, <clears throat> up toward the top, we've got some Pacific cod. Again, some big mouths up there, some aggressive feeders. And then down there in that little den, we've got a wolf eel. Uh, we'll see if the wolf eel is interested in coming out to feed. I'm going to hand it off to Kenny. There are a few other fish that are kind of hiding out there. Uh, there's one deep in the shadows, a ling cod. And I'll let oh, Kenny okay. talk about who is who uh, as the fish are eating. He can point those out. And I'm going to have Kenny just call in the food as soon as he's ready. Perfect. All right. You, well, uh, thanks, guys, again, for everybody tuning in today. Um, like Darren was saying, we have a lot of different uh, types of fish here. This is uh, Denison's. It kind of this exhibit represents our deeper living um, animals, kind of deeper in the water column. Usually, um, depth you're not going to see scuba diving, or we're not going to be able to typically collect by hand. Usually, traps or other deeper uh, methods. And this also happens to be our exhibit with our biggest fish. So this is kind of our big fish tank in here. Um, we have the, uh, the ling cod and the halibut. Both of those are pretty iconic uh, animals here in Alaska. When people come to the Sea Life Center, usually one of the first questions they have are, where are the restrooms and can I see a halibut? And the answer is down here. Um, you're on your own for the restroom. But, um, we, we have, uh, you'll, you'll probably be able to see it when it uh, comes up here to the surface when we start feeding. Um, for those of you who've tuned in earlier to some of these uh, feeds or some of these programs, you know that we um, feed our animals here at the aquarium a large feed. So basically, a uh, little bit Bigger food, we feed them every other day here. So today's actually the big feed day and we'll be feeding um, these animals. And that's just to give uh, all the animals kind of a break. We don't want to just saturate them with tons of food all the time, especially with our water being cold. And this is actually our kind of our coldest time of year for water. So animals are slow growing. Uh, many of these fish, especially the rock fish um, that you'll see here at the aquarium have been here since pretty much this place opened up. So they've lived here a long time. Um, we'll be feeding today uh, some silver sides. Silver sides are a smaller bait fish, about three inches long. Um, they're kind of yellowish in color, and um, we'll be feeding them whole. So not chopped up in any way, whole silver sides. And that's just because, like Darren was saying earlier, these fish have uh, big mouths, and they're able to actually eat um, some pretty large food. We uh, will feed them typically squid, uh, silver sides, um, or occasionally uh, some krill uh, if well, these fish are a little smaller. At this size, they'll kind of only go for some of the larger types of fish that we have here to offer. Um, when we are doing these feeds, the role of an, an aquarist such as myself is to not just chuck the food in and say, see you later. Uh, we're actually here to make observations, make sure that all the fish are actually getting food, uh, make sure that no one's kind of hiding um, down on the bottom, getting outcompeted by maybe a more aggressive fish, which typically happens, um, especially with greenling. Uh, this link caught over here in the, uh, the left side of our exhibit is a greenling. They're typically known as very aggressive, very voracious feeders. So it does have a habit of sometimes outcompeting the other fish. And we just want to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. So we'll, we'll try to feed slowly and just make sure everybody gets some. So I think we're in a good spot right now, um, good view of the tank. I'm going to actually radio our uh, assistant aquarist in the works right here. 
to uh, start putting in some food, and uh, you guys will be able to see this. So, Lindsay, you copy? We're ready for some food. Copy that. All right, so she's, gonna, she's actually behind our exhibit right now, and uh, she's going to start putting in some uh, silver sides, like I said earlier. She's going to put in a handful um, of silver sides, and kind of our goal is to spread it out. So what we're seeing right now is up here at the, uh, the top of the exhibit, <clears throat> we have our Pacific cod, so one of the many cod species um, we have here in Alaska, and they're chomping away at a lot of the stuff at the surface. And here comes our halibut too, making sure he's trying to get, he's gonna get a few pieces of uh, the silver sides. Oh, there we go. I hope you guys got to see that. The halibut nailed one right there. That was good. So as we keep putting in more food, um, we also have a, a wolf eel, which the wolf eel you can see is kinda eyeing the action right now. Um, this is a female wolf eel. Uh, pretty similar size to the one that we have in the bird habitat. The, uh, the wolf field is kind of hiding out in this den right here at the bottom of the exhibit. Um, we'll actually construct these dens because wolf fields are very uh, kind of solitary. Um, they like to kind of hide in a cave or a rocky den. And we just try to give them the best chance for <clears throat> best survival, best, uh, best and mimic of their actual environment. So we have actually two dens constructed here. Some of the other animals use th that one. But um, the wolf eel, she loves to hang out in here. I'd say she's about four and a half um, feet long right now, so she's pretty large. We, um, I haven't seen her get any food, so when Lindsay puts in another little bit of uh, silver sides, you get a nice view of some sinking down right here. Hopefully the wolf field will come up and actually get some of the food. And um, all that talk about the ling cod, the ling cod hasn't really moved either. I may have missed it, but it uh, doesn't appear like the, the ling cod got any of that food. So we like to kind of put it in in, uh, in waves here, a few pieces at a time. Um, the, the cool thing about this exhibit as well is, like I said, many of these fish are kind of the ones that people come here to the Sea Life Center to actually see. Um, the ling cod and the, the halibut are probably the most prized or sought after sport fish that um, you'll find here in Resurrection Bay. There's lots of charters and uh, different companies basically that'll take you out to try to go and catch some of these and they're very pr sought after. Um, and that's mostly because of their size. So let's see who we find here first. The, uh, the ling cod located right in the back kind of turning its head a little bit. There we go. This is actually a female ling cod. Um, ling cod can get to about five feet uh, long, and they'll actually live up to 25 years. So that's a pretty long period of time for a fish. Uh, they actually will get um, sexually mature around three to five years old when they'll actually start reproducing and laying eggs. And Ling cod, like I was saying earlier, they are very uh, voracious, um, aggressive eaters. They'll actually live on rocky pinnacles, typically offshore, especially the larger ones. So um, you'll, you'll typically find them, like I said, around pretty shallow in depth um, on these nice rocky reefs or these rocky pinnacles. And they'll pretty much go after anything that swims by. Fish, uh, primarily salmon, they love eating salmon. Uh, other smaller invertebrates as well. Uh, and they have very large teeth, which they're able to use to catch those fast moving slippery fish, um, which is really neat to see. And because of all that and how much they eat, they can get up to about 80 pounds is kind of the maximum you'll be able to see these guys. So that's a pretty, pretty large size. Um, and they have, like, a, like I said, a pretty aggressive face. Um, so really a, a neat looking fish to try to um, kind of display here, as well as maybe encounter in the wild. And halibut, um, this is actually our only halibut, I believe, that we have on display at the moment. Uh, a lot of people get a little mixed up. We have many different species of flatfish here in Alaska, and especially here at the Sea Life Center. Halibut, like Darren was saying earlier, 
are a flatfish too. The best way to kind of tell a difference between a halibut and let's say like a starry flounder or a, a, a rock sole or some other um, fish that is flat and lit, had its life is primarily on the bottom of the ocean is that back fin, which may, may be tough to see at this angle, is very triangular. It's kind of flat at the bottom as opposed to a, a, fl a flounder or a sole. It'll be pretty rounded. Their body shape is also um, very elongated. They're not as wide as you would maybe see in another um, flatfish. And kind of the, the other main distinction is just their size. They are uh, massive. So halibut can live to about 55 years, and there's a uh, record halibut up close to 500 pounds, um, if not more. So they can get massive. The one we have right here, I'd probably say is about 10 pounds. So uh, definitely still a very small halibut. Um, so not, not breaking any records here, but that's kind of our goal. We don't want to have these fish that, like we said, we just pump them full of food and they get massive because this is really the kind of the biggest tank we have for these type of fish besides if we were to put them in the bird habitat. So kind of limited space here. And yeah, well, so Kenny, sorry oh, to interrupt. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. What's the biggest halibut you've ever caught? Not to brag. Well, pff, I've caught so many halibut, it's hard to remember them all. I'm just kidding. I <laughs> Uh, not very big. I'm not the best fisherman. <laughs> but there's always, a, there's always a chance out there. Um, so that was a good question. Thanks, Darren. <laughs> uh, so along with the halibut, um, oh, there we go. You've probably also noticed our uh, Pacific cod up here at the top of the exhibit. Um, I don't know if we get a good view of that. Perfect. Uh, so the Pacific cod are uh, a gadded, a, a cod. We have a couple here, uh, different types of gaddeds here at the Sea Life Center. We have um, some tom cod, we have pollock, and we have saffron cod. The, uh, the best way to kind of tell these fish is they have that distinct barbell at the underside of their chin. So you can kind of see, um, you might be able to see that right now. And that, those, the tom cod will uh, typically have, have that as well. Um, the pollock will not. They'll typically lack that barbell. So it's one good way, uh, as well as that kind of that tigerish, uh, orange, silvery type coloration on the side of their body. So kind of good way to identify them. Um, the Pacific cod, they'll live about 17 years. And like most animals, including our ling cod, um, th these tom cod here, when they're juveniles, you can find them typically in eelgrass beds. So out here in uh, Resurrection Bay, we typically will go and do beach sands. And that's basically where we just drag a, kind of a, a big net through a eelgrass bed area. Um, and we see what we, we collect. And we, we find these areas out at Lowell Point and out in uh, Thumb Cove. And we'll typically catch lots of juvenile ling cod as well as some of these uh, cod or different gadded species. These, uh, the Pacific cod, um, pollock, they love hanging out in muddy uh, bottoms as well. And they're typically uh, kind of found relatively shallow um, depths. And they'll hunt primarily at night. So we see them a lot of times on night dives um, right off the Sea Life Center here where it's very muddy. Um, as opposed to if you were to go out further in the bay. So uh, really cool, uh, neat fish, also very important um, commercially. They're commercially fished as well. I believe there's four separate fisheries in the state of Alaska. Um, a very uh, economical, uh, important fish here uh, in the state. So this guy over here has been checking me out as well. This is kind of one of the last fish I was going to talk about. This is our um, black spotted rockfish. We have three here in our Denison's exhibit. Um, they seem to be kind of hiding right now. Um, black spotted rockfish, they're, they're, we have many different types of rockfish here at the Sea Life Center. These ones, there's actually not too, too much known about them, which is actually pretty cool. They live relatively deep. 
um, usually between 600 to uh, 1,500 feet down, where they're typically found. They're mostly caught on bottom trawls or um, kind of different methods for deep, deep fishing. You won't catch them typically recreational hook and line fishing, which is one of the reasons they're not as encountered as, <laughs> as, encountered as much. Um, here we go, saying hi to me right here. <laughs> but um, yeah, really pretty cool that we have one of them. I believe are one of the, the few facilities that actually has these this species of rockfish as well. So neat to see. And it looks like everybody here got all their food, which is, uh, which is nice. We never got to see a good view of that wolf eel, but um, they'll typically go through different periods of uh, fasting. So usually in the winter to the spring, they won't eat as much. Water's a little colder. So we'll wait until uh, typically summer to fall is when they'll be a little more voracious and moving around a little more as opposed to this halibut, which just keeps eating everything. Um, but yeah, it looks like everybody got food and everyone looks happy in the exhibit. So I, uh, I don't know if there's any questions or anybody has any comments. No, no questions? Awesome. The comment that we had, Kenny, is this is so cool. And it really is. Uh, <clears throat> Like Kenny had an opportunity to go through some of the species in this tank. There's not a lot of diversity in this one. There's not a lot of different species. Some of our tanks that uh, exhibit more shallow areas have 12, 15, 20 different species in them. The reality is deep water, uh, first of all, only so many fish are down there. The habitat is not very diverse, but also it can be challenging to collect some of these species. Um, so having these unique species on exhibit is fantastic for us here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. It's awesome to have someone like Kenny with all of his knowledge to share these animals with us. And uh, if you would like to know more about these fish, keep watching for these YouTube live videos. Uh, follow us on Facebook and YouTube. On our YouTube channel, if you just go to the uh, Education Corner playlist, you'll see all of the videos that we have uploaded live, and uh, including this one, and continue following us. Thanks a bunch for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.